Kind of any other play. What's that? And this is the house coming in. Down at the solo plate house. Okay, Neil. I'm gonna do the best I can.
Unfortunately for me, because the circumstances beyond my control, my neighborhood, my world, my own kind were basically fantasy creations. Growing up, my learning tools were movies, comic books, and my dad's playboys. Realism, huh? Basically, pure snow, built like a brick shit house, and not real. I can still remember that special moment when my dad sat me down and no, 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 not the birds and the bees. Russell, we need to talk. Yes, Dad? Well, what I wanted to say was, look. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> what do you see? Uh, a, a pretty lady, Daddy. <laughs> and she's naked. Yes, Russell. Now, I want you to take a good look at bees. <laughs> Very pretty and big. Yes, <laughs> no. See these breasts? Yes. If they stick straight up when a woman is lying down, they're made of plastic. It's called implants. 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 Just thought you should be aware of that, son. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Dad. Tell your mom she gets home. I'm taking a nap. Okay. Now, now let me tell you. You might have played tricks on you when you realize that girls are made out of plastic. <laughs> I mean, where do you blow? Maybe my problems with women. Maybe they stem from my fascination with television and old movies. You see, I've never been a good sleeper. Always up all night watching TV. You, you could say that television was my nighttime companion. I guess you could say it still is, but especially when I was a kid. Once Dad went to work and Mom was asleep, I'd sneak into the living room and quietly turn on that television, and I would be transported. I mean, television kept me company. It enlightened me, it entertained me, but mostly what I think it did was teach me about love. <laughs> of course, once I grew up in real life, my episodes were more like, were more like the Twilight Zone. I mean, not once did Audrey have fun with Grace Kelly and in my hemisphere. Not once did Sid Charisse or Ginger Rogers fold on here for me. All I ever dreamed about was Gidget. Or Doris Day. I mean, I spent my entire childhood fantasizing that I would meet her. And we would spend the rest of our days in splendor. Russell, come here. Yes, yes. Daddy? Sit down. Daddy? <laughs> I've been to talk to you about something rather important.
We met when we both worked at rival ice cream shops right across the street from each other. I knew instantly that I had been the one. But being the shy, petrified guy that I am, that I was, I didn't say a word. I, my friend who worked with her suggested that I write her a note.
until it was time for her to go off to college. Until it ended. I mean, it wasn't supposed to end that way. I mean, we, okay, I had made all these plans to visit her on the weekends and how we spend the holidays and what our children would look like. But once she went off to school, I never heard from her again, ever. It was like she disappeared off the face of the earth. I mean, if she loved me the way she said she did, how could she just leave and forget everything we had meant to each other? Why hasn't she written once? So I waited and waited and waited for her to call. But mostly what I did, mostly what I did was cry. That's right, I cried. I mean, two years later, I still hadn't dated anyone. And I still hadn't gotten over her with one day out of the blue and as if nothing had ever happened. Hi. Oh, I know. I owe you a really big apology here. I'm so sorry. It's just when I got to school, I was totally swamped. And honestly, I lost all track of time between getting situated and homework. And, and I wanted to call you, but after a while, I kind of felt guilty. And I wasn't sure how you would react if I called. You so. felt guilty? Well, yeah, but I have great news. I transferred to NYU, so I'm moving back to New York. So if you want to get together, we can. Excuse me? Do you have any idea what you put me through, how much you hurt me? Do you think for one second that I'm going to trust you again? I know. Daddy mentioned that you may have called once or twice. Once or twice? Try like 97 times. Maybe that should have given you the idea, like, I don't know, pick up the goddamn phone. I mean, I, I love you. Do you think we could just pick up right where we were as if nothing had ever happened? Sorry. I don't think so. Well, I understand. But if you change your mind, you have daddy's number. Bye. So that was Becky. I mean, I said goodbye to her that day. But I don't think I've ever really gotten over her or us. Anyway, a few years later, when I finally began dating again, <laughs> I met Anita. I mean, at first it was a blast. Real fun, you know? For me, it was just lust at first sight. <laughs> My turn. Rusty, I want you to sit right here. Okay, what kind of games are we playing this time? You know I never play games. <laughs> We shall see, my lovely, but when I win tonight's competition, I expect a major lip lock. You mean like this?
later. I was ready for a change. <laughs>
Uh, I agree. I couldn't wait to go to Universal Studios again. <laughs> My one chance at true happiness in front of a national television audience, no less, and it was being ruined by a person who wasn't playing by the rules. You bitch. So I had the days of bitching to myself by how this person was ruining my moment in the sun. I got myself so riled up that I called the producers up, filled them in, and you guessed it, the date was canceled. I mean, she had admitted it all to them, how she was doing this for fame and the fortune, not for the love and the romance like me. You think your love life is bad? I can't even get a date on love connection. <laughs> <laughs>
She lived in Watt. I really liked her name. She was even at the comic books. And you know she was special, because the once dating a girl who wasn't Jewish didn't seem to bother me. All those years of living in Crown Heights really paid off. <laughs> a few weeks after my mom's interrogation, I met Renee's entire family, all 12 of them. And to my amazement, they all greeted me with open arms. Even her six foot eight inch tall basketball player, older brother Jerome, was like, wow, what a great family. Here I was afraid to get beat up or something. And they don't seem to love me. They didn't seem to know that I was white. Renee, I just got to tell you how amazing your family is. Really? Uh -huh. Thanks, but what do you mean? Well, they, they didn't seem to notice my... Your what? Uh, my skin color, and I'm white. I mean, they aren't colorblind or anything, are they? Russell, I only date white men. You do know that, don't you? You what? I only date white men. What's the big deal? I'm just not attracted to black men. I mean, not that I'm complaining or anything, but uh, do you have a problem with... I don't see what the big deal is. I just don't find black men to be trustworthy. Trustworthy? Well, you know, they don't work. They all seem to be on welfare. Excuse me? I mean, there are exceptions, like my father for one, but I cannot handle men who beat their women. What? Beat their women? And as for Asians and Puerto Ricans, don't even get me started. What's the big deal? You lied to your mom about me being black. Well, that's different. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I think the fact that I might have saved three lives is a hell of a different color than the fact that you completely disavowed an entire race of possibilities in the area of love. What three people? Well, my mother, my father, probably. Excuse me? That's right. If I hadn't lied to my mom, she might have had a heart attack. And if I did tell mom, she would have told dad, and he would have had a heart attack. Well, who's the third part guy? Me? If dad found out, I'd be dead. Well, ha! You know what? Goodbye. Bye. I mean, I thought I was special. I mean, I thought I was a white knight. I was just a white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gladys Knight was right. L.A. proved too much for this man. Eventually, having never met Mike Gidget, I decided to move back to New York City, determined never to ever get involved with women again. And guess this one, not only did I move back to New York broke and in debt, but I moved back in with my parents. Back to my old bedroom. Russell, come, come. Sit between your father and me. Yes, son, I saved a few magazines. Schmendrick.
I couldn't take it anymore. I ran away from home again. I sublet this apartment in New York City, a studio the size of my old bedroom. <laughs> this was going to be my swinging basketball pad, my chick magnet. Yeah, right. Unfortunately for me, the only thing that it attracted was the next woman in my life. At a reunion I went to, I was introduced to her. I mean, I couldn't wait to go to my reunion. I had this whole scenario on my head. I have to run into an old high school play. Women who didn't know I could back then would simply go head over heels in love with me now. They would simply go mad for me. <laughs> How true. How true. What actually did. <laughs> Martha. Martha was the president of my high school alumni association. I mean, she seemed nice enough, but honestly, I didn't take any notice. I mean, a few weeks after, a few days later, I should say, she called me. Hello? Hello? Russell? Remember me? Who is this? You don't recognize my voice? No. Uh, who is this? It's Martha. Uh, Martha who? You're a alumni class president. Oh, hi. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I, I was updating our files and noticed you lived in my neighborhood. I can show you around. We should do brunch. Brunch? Well, I, I did have questions about organizing a reunion. Reunion? Oh, oh yes. Reunion. I should have said no. <laughs> what started out as an innocent cup of coffee soon turned rather strange. I mean, at first she would leave me these quaint little messages telling me about her day. Hi, Russell. Oh, you're not in. Guess who this is? Come on, guess! Okay, gotcha. It's Martha. I told you I called, didn't I? So, guess what I did? And then the messages began lasting 10 to 20 minutes. Went to the store today. <laughs> Needed eggs. I mean, who was 
I kidding? There'd be no romantic reunion, no alumnus pining for me all these years. No. My reality, my reality was that I was being stalked by my high school alumni president. I mean, I could picture myself being acted at by Norman Bates' mother. No. No reunion for me. Better safe than sorry. However, the very next day, I ran into an old high school flame. Talk about your timing. Joanne was this beautiful girl from my home room. One I actually never had the guts to ask me how to meet. She was a Jehovah's Witness. And when I was growing up, anyone who wasn't Jewish was a complete no-no. I mean, I was petrified of what God would say, <laughs> let alone Dad. So I never took a shot.
You're gay. <laughs> At one point, I decided I needed a little help with the dating game. Okay, I was desperate, okay? I mean, I already tried the bar scene. Friends picking me up parties, club men, and hedonism, too. I even tried video dating. And after a long dry spell of, well, no one? I actually tried a matchmaker. Against her, my mom set this up. And you know, they aren't called yetters for nothing.
See you later. <laughs> that was our relationship. Not a good one. Do you see this jacket? I owe a great debt to this jacket. It caused our breakup. <laughs> It will remain in my heart forever. <laughs> you see this wedding invitation? No, it wasn't for Olive, thank God. Honey, what's this? It's an invitation. One of my cousins is getting married. It says here that you've been invited. Stag! Well, am I invited? I mean, I am your girlfriend, aren't I? Of course you're my girlfriend. We are. My mom's looking at
just looking for someone normal. I mean, I began dating Teresa. I mean, I honestly thought that she was the one. I was beginning to think this night would never happen. I know. Me too. But I, I wanted our first time to be special, to be perfect. And it is special. I mean, you're here with me, and we love each other. you could tell me could surprise me. I mean, not after what I've been through. What? You're really a man, right? <laughs> no. There's nothing as ridiculous as that. Okay. It's just that I know. Well, you see, when I... I... Teresa, come on. What's up? Well, sweetheart, I, I've been trying to tell you this for a while. I mean... I always wait to tell this. I don't want to scare them off, you know. I... Teresa, come on, you can tell me anything. I mean, what could be so bad? I mean, how bad could it be? Well, sweetheart, uh -huh. um, you see, when I, it can take over an hour. It?
27 minutes and 42 <laughs> seconds. But who's counting? Russell? Teresa. He thinks she's coming too. Where are you? Here, sweetie. Are you ready for round two? Round two? ready for round one yet. A few weeks after this, we broke up. I mean, there aren't enough hours in the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> I decided after Teresa that I needed to get a little help. I mean, after Teresa, can you blame me? Jeez. I mean, my first girlfriend seriously broke my aunt, my second, my back. <laughs> I mean, there was the flying nun, the worst matchmaker, the history of mankind, and lots of women I don't even want to remember their names. And don't even get me started on my parents. But after Teresa, after Teresa, I decided it was time to get a little professional help. So, um, what do you think? Individual sounds really good. <laughs> I wouldn't want too many people knowing my <laughs> business. Yeah, I 
Oh, yeah? Oh, so... They which, have some of the real women. Which one of them is Martha? No, no. <laughs> I never met her. I'm kidding, kidding. She's there. Ah! <laughs> Hey, Neil, good job, man. Thank you. You're fine. Uh, Can we do it again? <laughs> I got a change. You know my brother can't. Yes, I know your brother can't. Oh, Bobby, uh, give me a 10. And, uh, okay. All right. Can, All right. Can we? Got it, you can. Okay. All righty, man. I thought you were going to behind the scenes. Oh, okay. I go, 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 go. Go. If it was me, if it wasn't for me, there'd be no light or no sound. That was you. Huh? Well. Thank you. And I like that because this, you can see the, uh, and 